This is five on your side at six, focused on you. A fire forced them out of their homes at a senior living center. Tonight, survivors are struggling to get back on their feet. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mike Bush. Ann Allred has the night off. The fire started on the second floor of the Touche Elderly Apartments yesterday afternoon. City officials say 82-year-old Judy St. John died after going into cardiac arrest. Five others are still in the hospital tonight. Five on your side's Tracy Hinson is live at the Cahokia Heights Community Center where 21 people who escaped the fire are now living. Tracy. All right, they just served dinner and the atmosphere inside is a pretty positive one, all things considered. Now, the Red Cross opened this shelter yesterday and they expect to keep it open as long as needed. Now, in the meantime, the Touche Regional Medical Staff will work on finding homes for these people, temporary housing and assisted living facilities and motels. Last night laying in here. <sighs> Coughing, walking, twisting, turning. We don't need cots, and they make noise when you do that in you know. them. LaSalle got a little rest last night, but his neighbor Oren slept better. It was okay. It was, it was better than where I was in my apartment. I was sleeping on the floor. The Red Cross set up beds and is providing meals for the displaced residents of the Touche elderly apartments. Kind of noticed the, the smell of the smoke getting stronger. And we looked up and down the back of it and we saw some smoke. It was white smoke creeping out of the upstairs window. The fire started Wednesday afternoon. Fire officials told us it was in the apartment of Judy St. John, the only victim. She was 82 years old, went into cardiac arrest and died. She lived in the apartment for over 20 years. She was one of the very first residents that moved into the Centerville apartments when they were first built. Investigators are looking into the cause of the fire. I have um, smoke damage on all three floors. Third floor is pretty good. Uh, first floor is not too bad. Second floor is heavy smoke damage. I have water damage on the second and first floor. Ceiling tiles on the second floor were falling down and the floor below was buckling. We don't have a time frame of when the residents will be back in. Now, Amron was working today to restore power to the units that were safe to do so, and Serve Pro was on site doing some work as well. Now, the assistant fire chief did tell me that she hopes they can get people back in their homes soon. In Cahokia Heights, Tracy Ensign, five on your side. A 16 year old girl reported missing in North Carolina has been found in Kirkwood. Police say she was inside a car with a convicted sex offender from Oklahoma. She's heading home. Christopher Porter is in jail facing several charges. Officers spotted his car yesterday in a shopping center parking lot on Lindbergh near 44. The girl told police she ran away from home after meeting Porter on a social media app. Part of a plan for a drive through marijuana dispensary in Soulard has been shelved after multiple groups, including administrators at a local school, voiced their opposition. Five in your side, Holden Kerwicki joins us now live in South St. Louis with an update. Holden. Well, Mike, the ownership group for Oculus LLC wants to turn this former Jimmy John's location that you see behind me into a dispensary. They were supposed to have a hearing with the city this morning for a conditional use permit, but late last night they decided to shelve those plans when they dropped the drive through portion of their project. The owners of this future kind goods may have dropped the idea of a drive through but that's not stopping them from opening a dispensary. To this moment, they're actually clearing it out so that they can open this in the near future. Under Missouri law, the dispensary would be illegal since it sits roughly 150 feet from Lift for Life Academy. But in the city of St. Louis, it is legal. The state had a rule, a thousand foot distance, unless a local municipality changed that. And sure enough, the, bo uh, the Board of Aldermen approved it a couple years ago of removing that. I am appalled at it being directly across the street in an urban setting. In an urban setting where I know it would not be in a county setting. That's why administrators at Lift for Life are asking the St. Louis Board of Aldermen to reverse their 2020 decision dropping distance requirements on dispensaries near schools, churches, and daycares. That loophole is only here in the city. So again, the city where we are continuously spiraling 
You want to put a loophole so that we are continuously spiraling. Though the 2020 policy predates Mayor Tishara Jones's administration, a spokesperson for the mayor's office told Five on Your Side, quote, we will review it and determine the best steps forward to ensure we can address the concerns of the community. You know, we want to have a safe and nurturing environment for students. And when something's like right smack in your face, that's a tough one. Right now it's Live for Life Academy, but next month it can be Vashon, it could be Sumner, it can be any of your other schools in the St. Louis City areas or any of your other charter schools. And so let's do better because our students in the St. Louis City area deserve better. I reached out to the ownership group for Kind Goods Dispensaries for comment on this story. However, they have yet to respond to my request. I'm told that the students here at Live for Life Academy are actually organizing a protest against the dispensary. However, a date has yet to be set. Reporting live in Soulard, Holden Kerwicki, Five on Your Side. A live look now at City Park downtown where the MLS playoffs begin on Sunday. The sun is setting on another unseasonably warm day. And tomorrow, we could see even record highs. Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell has the weather first forecast. Scott? I think tomorrow will be the last opportunity in a while to see really warm temperatures for us. We're headed back above 80 degrees tomorrow for the high. The record's 85. We're going to go with 84. Yes, that's on the high end of all the guidance, but we've trended on the high end of all the guidance with this warm air in place. But the change is coming after that, heading into the weekend. Well, you need to know about it by Sunday if you're headed over to City Park. We're talking temperatures by 9 o'clock Sunday night, only around 40 degrees with wind chills. We do have some scattered showers across the area, another patch pushing in right now from the southwest. So this is scattered. You're not going to get a lot of rainfall in most spots, but at least the chance is there for the next three or four hours. And then after that, we should be quiet until later tomorrow afternoon with another chance for a shower storm. Soggy by Saturday night into Sunday, and boy, is it colder. More on the first freeze in a few. Right now, there's a battle over the restrooms in the Francis Howell School District. In 30 minutes, the board will discuss a new policy that requires students to use the restroom that matches the sex on their birth certificates. Our Justina Cornell learned more about the policy and joins us live from the school's administration building. Justina. Yeah, Mike, so I spoke to people on both sides, those who are for and against this policy. Now, both sides say they, they are passionate about this topic and want to make sure their voices are heard tonight. My child is very, um, very uh, upset. A policy over privacy feels personal to Becky Hormuth. I have a 16 year old trans son um, who attends Francis Howe High School. She's a part of Transparent USA, an organization providing support for parents of trans children. Hormuth believes that support system is needed now more than ever. It's our neighbors are specifically targeting my kid. They phrase it in a way that they are trying to protect students in general, but in, real, or in reality, um, they're not. The frustrations are against a proposed policy by a Francis House School Board member. Policy 2116 requires students using bathrooms or locker rooms determined by the sex marker on the student's birth certificate. It also proposes each school within the district to provide a minimum one single use restroom and this can have signage indicating use by more than one sex. Oh, it's total segregation. It's forcing these kids to be outed if they're not outed. I just feel like that it is targeting our kids to endure even more emotional distress. The founders at Francis Howell families see it differently. Mother I spoke to last spring who had a daughter that was um, uncomfortable going into the bathroom at Francis Hall North because there was a boy at that time going in. Vivian Gontar says they want to protect students. If you're going to make it okay for little kids, is it also okay for adults? Do you want a transgender adult or someone claiming to be transgender? You don't, you don't know when somebody walks into a bathroom what their intent is. Hormuth wants to defend her child too. As our kids are normal kids go. that just want to be um, accepted who they are. The meeting tonight starts at 630 and it will be the first reading. We're told a vote and happen at the next meeting, which will be November 16th. Reporting live, Justina Cornell, five on your side. Coming up, a closed sign posted on the door of a florist business that's usually open 24 seven. The reason behind the shutdown, plus a salute to a native son in Wood River, the tribute to a fallen police officer.